So, Battlefield 4 CTE recently got a new update that allows us to access all of the weapons that will be in the Weapons Crate DLC that comes out at the end of April, as well as allowing us to access the returning game mode Gunmaster from Battlefield 3. Now, all of these guns are really awesome in my opinion. I got to try out each and every one of them. However, I will not have much gameplay in the background because the CTE seems to have some issues lately where if there are people trying to join in because everybody is trying to access these new weapons, there's so many people trying to join, and when somebody tries to join, it kicks you out and gives you an error saying server was full. Even though you had been in the server for a while, and you had maybe been on your fifth tier in Gunmaster, and it's extremely annoying, so if any of you guys are trying to go out and try out these new weapons, you might be presented with this error, and you might be able to stay in a server from anywhere from 3 to 10 minutes before it kicks you out because the server was full. So, that's very annoying, but overall these weapons are really cool, and I can't wait to see them come into the full version, the retail version of Battlefield 4, and Gunmaster, for the most part, plays out really well. To start off with, I want to talk to you guys about Gunmaster because there are some issues in it that do need to be addressed before it does come out in the retail version of the game, and I'm sure that it will be. I'm sure that they will fix it perfectly and it will be perfectly fine when it comes to the full game, but at this point in time in the CTE, because this is a very early version of the game mode and very early versions of the weapons, there are going to be some issues. So in Gunmaster, it works out very similar to how it did in Battlefield 3, where you go through a series of weapons that starts with your pistols, goes to your higher powered pistols, your PDWs, your carbines, your assault rifles, your LMGs, your snipers, then your grenade launchers or whatever else, your crossbow or your X-bow in this game, and then to your knife and things like that. And you are able to customize the order and the progression of the weapons to your liking if you are the server owner. And so you might get on some servers where there's some very strange progression progression and loadouts and kind of advances through the weapon so it's very different but I think it works out great and overall I like the challenge of the servers that do provide some different weapons than what you would expect and overall Gunmaster plays out well in that kind of idea aspect of it but on the other hand Gunmaster takes place on the team deathmatch versions of each map which is fine however the pickup weapons such as the USAS and the 50 caliber are still there and are still on the map and they don't help progress through any of the weapons you do have to get the kills with those weapons and they don't help at all but there are those people who just go in there and decide to be asses and kill you with their USAS 12 or their 50 cal over and over and over and over and oh, oh and I mentioned over again and it gets really really redundant and really really annoying and I ended up dying maybe four or five times in a row to a guy with the USAS 12 for, uh, USAS 12 because he continued to do it over and over. He would pick it up as soon as it respawned and everything. It was annoying as hell. So hopefully they take that out. And if they don't do that, I would really not be opposed to them moving the location of the map to somewhere else. Like for example in Siege of Shanghai, instead of where it is currently located on Team Deathmatch and Domination, I would really like them to maybe make it take place where the big building that falls down is. You know, you can maybe fight on top of the building, on the bottom of the building, and the surrounding area that goes right up to the edge of the water, and then some of the road out in front of the building. So, I think that would be a really cool place, so maybe they can think about moving the locations of where you can actually play this game mode on each of the maps, and I think it would turn out really well if they tried something different than the usual Team Deathmatch and Domination maps that we are used to seeing on most of the close quarters and small maps like Diffuse and all the other ones along with it. So, overall Gunmaster is fine, it plays out well. But if they could just maybe fix the pickup weapons and remove them from the maps completely or just move the maps elsewhere, either way it'd work out very fine and I think it would be great to play Gunmaster because I love Gunmaster, I've always loved Gunmaster and it plays out very similar to how it did in Battlefield 3. Now taking a look at the weapons, as you guys might remember, I made a video predicting what the weapons will be and for the most part the predictions were correct that I had as well as a lot of people had. And overall, the weapons are really cool. You get the AN-94 for your assault rifle, which everybody predicted. And then for your carbine and your PDW, you get a Groza. And one is Groza 1, and one is the Groza 4. And what the Groza is, it is basically the OTS-14 that I talked about in my prediction video. The OTS-14 Groza is the full name of the weapon. And as I said in that video, the OTS-14 is very versatile, where you can do some quick change modifications to make it be basically a PDW or a carbine or a sniper or an assault rifle. And it looks like their way of bringing that aspect into the game is basically by making two different Grozas of different names that are able to either be a PDW or a Carbine. And the Carbine has a faster firing rate 
compared to the PDW, but it has a lot more recoil that is very sporadic. But overall, the weapons seem to be balanced pretty well, and I can't wait to see them come into the full game. Uh, we also get the L86A2 LMG, which is more like an assault rifle at this point in time. And we also get the Mare's Leg, which is basically, as you guys remember my prediction video, I talked about the Model 1894. The Mare's Leg is a sawed-off version of that weapon. That's how it originated, and gradually it became its own thing, but it was originally just a sawed-off version of the Model 1892 or the Model 1894, one of the two, and they're basically the same gun anyway, so that's how the Mare's Leg comes to be. And it's a really cool sidearm that is basically a miniature sniper rifle you can carry around with you. Now, um, it's not like it's overpowered. It only has a certain one-shot kill range when it comes to headshots, but... It's about as powerful as a Magnum, so I'd say it's fairly decently powerful, and I think it's a lot better at using at range. However, in close quarter situations, you will find it more difficult because you will have to pull the lever back every single time you shoot, so that can be a drawback. You'll notice all of these weapons, at, besides the Groza 1, have got a very soap bar type of thing, as I'm referring to it right now. If you remember in like prison movies and stuff, people will carve knives and stuff and shanks out of soap bars, and that's basically what these guns make me think of, like they've been carved out of a soap bar. And the reason why it's that way is because they haven't exactly finalized the textures on them, and I'm sure, I guarantee, there's no doubt in my mind, that the guns will be finalized in textures before the gun does show up in the full retail version of the game. On another note, the AN-94 is not quite what we expected it to be at this point in time, but I'm sure it will change. It only shoots at 600 rounds per minute in full, fully automatic and in burst, which is not correct. Uh, in burst fire, which is a two-round burst, it's supposed to shoot at 1,200 rounds per minute, as it does in Battlefield 3. And the first two bullets, when shooting in fully automatic, are also supposed to be at 1,200, or maybe it's 1,800. I'm not exactly sure what the RPM is, but it is supposed to shoot that on its first two bullets. That's why its burst fire works like that, is because the way the gun shoots in fully automatic, the first two bullets come out faster than the rest. And so when you put it into burst fire, it basically only shoots those two bullets that come out faster over and over and over. And they haven't added that into the game yet, but I guarantee that it will be added before the game does, uh, before the guns do enter into the retail version of the game, because it would be very disappointing and very inaccurate to its real life counterpart if they did not do so. And a lot of people will be very disappointed as well. Uh, also, similarly, the L86A2 only has a 30 round magazine, which I think is very limiting. Some people are saying that it reminds me more of an assault rifle in that sense, but. It still has the firing rate and the kind of damage model and etc. and accuracy of an LMG, but the magazine capacity of a, an assault rifle. So that doesn't really make sense. Hopefully they up that up to 45 and it makes more sense in the future. But at this point in time, it is very limited in my opinion. And I do apologize for not having more gameplay, but that is all I was able to get. I wanted to inform you guys of everything that we are able to see within the CTE right now. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys did, then be sure to leave a like, and uh, I would really appreciate that. It would help out a ton. But as always, this has been Lupus, and I will catch you guys in the next one.